All right, good afternoon to everyone. Welcome everyone to our Health Transformation webinar series. I'm your host, Eileen. Today, we have a sharing on the topic, how to boost your immune system through exercise. Many of us know that keeping your hands clean and your diet healthy are some useful ways to keep the immune system working well. But what about regular exercise? Could this be of benefit to your immune system too? If yes, how much exercise is good for the immune system? And what type of exercise can help to boost your immune system? Let's find out from our presenter today, Ms. Simon Law. Ms. Simon Law holds a Bachelor of Physiotherapy in the University of Hertfordshire in United Kingdom. Currently working in Columbia Asia Hospital Seremban, she has four years of experience in treating patients with exercise, prescription, and pain management. She is passionate about improving lives by introducing active rehabilitation and personalized programs tailored to each individual. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Ms. Simone Law. Everyone, yeah, my name is Simone, and a very good afternoon to everyone tuned in today. Thank you for tuning in today, by the way. Yeah, so just to get the ball rolling, right? I just want to ask, like, how is everyone's M FMCO going so far? Uh, yeah, I mean, if there's a comment section at the bottom, right? Please go ahead and just drop in your comments and, like, just get a small discussion going, okay? Okay, so has anyone of you maybe started doing something out of your comfort zone or learned anything new during this FMCO? Like, you know, for example, cooking your favorite dish that you cannot find anywhere else, maybe only in the restaurant that you like. Or, for example, being a bit more mindful about your health by starting to eat well, taking supplements, or maybe working out, yeah? Uh, or it could also be like maybe starting a new hobby, like maybe keeping a succulent garden at home, okay? So yeah, you know, since we have been hit by COVID nineteen, right? I'm sh I'm I'm sure the health topic or like anything related to boosting your immune system has been a really really hot topic out there, and it, it has been like you know everyone has been talking about it, young or old, right? And it is definitely known from the news uh, or the recent happenings, right? That prevention and having a uh, good health throughout is definitely the way forward. So today I'm here to share with all of you how we can strengthen our immune system through exercising, okay? And yeah, let's just begin by getting to know our immune system a little bit better, okay? Okay, so yeah, what is our immune system? So it is a complex network of cells and organs uh, and also proteins that has a very, very vital role and it actually defends the body against the harmful substances, germs, or any cell changes that may occur and in the end uh, gets you sick, okay? Uh, yeah. So the immune system keeps a record of all the, all the germs that has been defeated so that it can recognize them next time and if it enters your body again, right, uh, it will quickly just destroy them, okay? So our immune system is quite is very essential for our survival and why is it so, right? Okay. Um, without the immune system, our bodies are open to attack from any bacteria, viruses, parasites. So, you know, this gives a like a like a very bad reaction for us to like sometimes we can get like diarrhea or like skin issues, for example, okay? And we basically need our immune system to keep us healthy and keep us going. Okay? So as long as your immune system is running pretty smoothly, you actually won't notice that it's there. But if it stops working properly, right, that then that's when that you actually fall sick. And the germs that are in your, uh, the germs that your body has never encountered before are also likely to get you sick. Um, and some of the germs that uh, get you sick for the first time, uh, yeah. It will get you sick for the first time and then uh, after that your bodies will produce yeah, the immune response against it, okay? Okay, so moving on, uh, how let's find out how our immune system works. So it's actually a very, very complicated process where many cells and organs work together. But just in basic terms, right, just referring to this diagram, you see the cells called leukocytes, right? Uh, these are actually the white blood cells in our body. And these white blood cells are produced in the bone marrow, which is that spongy substance that can be found in the center of your bones. So, okay, now I, I just want you guys to imagine uh, 
imagine that you are at war, right? And these uh, white blood cells are like the body's military intelligence system. And when they find their target, right, they will send uh, their defenses to lock onto them. And then uh, eventually it will destroy the invaders that they find. Okay. So uh, once our body senses this uh, bacteria, right, the immune system will work together to recognize this bacteria and then uh, get rid of them entirely. Okay. Uh, after that, right, then there comes like a different group of white blood cells uh, that helps make antibodies in our body. And this uh, protein, right, it will lock onto specific bacteria. After, uh, after they are made, these antibodies usually stay in our body in case we have to fight any other, um, like the same bacteria that, that it comes across again. And then uh, uh, that's why when somebody gets sick, like, like you know, like get, if they get chicken pox or something similar to that, right? They usually won't get sick from it again because the antibodies are already in our system to protect us. Okay. Okay, now moving on. Uh, yeah, what are the different types of immunity in our body? So, everyone's immune system is different, but as we become adults, right, uh, it generally becomes stronger because in time we are exposed to more types of bacteria and viruses, and this would lead to us developing more immunity from this. And this is why, like teenagers and adults, they we tend to get sick less often uh, compared to children. Okay, so the first uh, type of uh, immunity is called the innate immunity. And basically, everyone is born with this sort of uh, natural immunity. And it is a very general and non-specific type of protection. So this includes uh, external barriers of our body and it is the first line of defense, okay? And for example, I'll give you an example. Uh, it's things like, you know, our skin or like our mucus layer in our throat and also in our gut system. So uh, for an example, right, uh, the skin will act as a barrier against all these germs from entering the body. And the immune, when the immune system uh, recognizes this, right, then uh, it, will, it will create a defense against it. But if these bacteria or viruses right, manage to dodge this first line of defense, uh, then the adaptive immunity kicks in and this is the, actually the second type of immunity in our body. So it actually, this uh, adaptive immunity, right, it actually develops uh, throughout our lives when we are exposed to diseases or when we get immunized against uh, this specific type of diseases through vaccines. Okay. Um, yeah. The last one is called passive immunity. And this type of immunity is actually borrowed from another source and it only lasts for a short period of time. I'll give you an example, okay? It's quite interesting. Uh, so these antibodies is present, like for example, in a mother's breast milk uh, and it gives a bit, the baby like a temporary immunity towards diseases uh, that probably the mother has been exposed to, okay? Okay, moving on. Um, okay, so... If you okay, so these are just a few causes of uh, uh, of a weak immune system, and yeah, if you've been experiencing like very persistent recurrent infections, you may be actually be suffering from a very weak immune system. And the most common cause of a weak immune system is actually aging. Yeah, uh, but that is not the only potential factor, of course. Other than age, right, there are a lot more, as you can see in this uh, list here. And the first one is like unhealthy lifestyle. And if you get like inadequate sleep, activity, or even sunlight, and then, um, you know, if you keep eating like a lot of processed foods, like fast foods, nuggets, sausages, those kind of things, right, uh, that will lead to a very unhealthy lifestyle. And the next one would be medications if you're on like very chronic steroid use or any other immune suppressant types of drugs, uh, it would also cause a, a weak immune system. Okay, uh, the next one would be immune system disorders. Okay, this will include any condition where the immune system is not working properly. And 
you could be actually born with this uh, sort of uh, condition uh, like or like have any condition like related to this like for example like AIDS or like leukemia okay and the last one is having an autoimmune disease and that would definitely cause a weak immune system uh, for example like rheumatoid arthritis or Crohn's disease where the immune system mistakenly uh, identifies a certain part of the body as a potential uh, risk for infection and then it goes and attacks it okay um yeah so these uh, type of diseases actually decrease the body's ability to combat any invaders and then it, it give, leaves you vulnerable okay okay moving on uh yeah so what signs do you get if your immune system is not healthy and it's very weak, right? So the first one is like feeling lethargic. So basically in our daily life, right, we, we work very hard night and day. So feeling tired after work is very, very normal, okay? Uh, everyone feels that. But if you actually feel fatigued even after taking proper rest, it may actually be an indicator and your body is like telling you that your immune system is weak and it actually requires uh, extra support during this time. And um, yeah, when your when your immune system is not very is not working very well, then your body will start wearing off a lot faster because it just constantly needs to just keep fighting all these harmful external factors, uh, and then like bacteria, and then it just leaves you being exhausted the whole day. Okay. The next one is uh, like an obstructed uh, respiration where you get like your common flus and colds, okay? And um, slow healing of wounds are also a sign of a weak immune system. So if you if you observe that your wound on, on your skin, right, is like taking longer to heal, uh, it, it is actually your body's way of telling you that maybe your immune system is weak, okay? And yeah, the next one could be infections. Like for example, if you get infection through pneumonia, like when you have infection in your lungs, uh, and then or like sinusitis, aches and pains are also a, a very common sign. And uh, things like, like if you have like digestive issues, so I'm not sure if you've heard of the saying, like the digestive system is like the gateway to health. Um, yeah, according to like specialists, right? The root of most of the diseases is uh, having a very weak digestive system and uh, there are actually good bacteria in our gut system to defend our body from different sorts of infection and it actually helps support the, the body's immune system but if you notice right if you have like symptoms like uh, frequent diarrhea constipation or like bloating and uh, that could also mean is that just giving you a sign that your your immune system is being uh, depleted and very weak, okay? Okay, the next one is stress. So if you stress over, uh, if you frequently stress over like the small, small things that, that can also interfere with your immune system's natural functioning, and this will result in like inflammation and then it reduces the production of white blood cells and then it puts the body at greater risk towards uh, infections, okay? And the last one is very common. It's like if when you have a fever, then it, it's just your body's way of telling you that uh, you may have an infection going on in the system somewhere, okay? Okay, the next one. So I've come up with like a, a list of a few ways that you can probably try and boost your immune system. So the first one is eating a balanced diet, okay? We all know that like uh, it's actually better to eat like healthy foods or more wholesome types of food. Like for example meat, vegetables, that you can just follow the food pyramid, okay? Uh, just to help amplify the immune response. So just remember you are you are what you eat, okay? Uh, try and give your body all the all the good benefits from good food, okay? Uh, the next one is to get enough sleep. So uh, okay, so the National uh, Sleep Foundation found that adults need at least seven uh, or more hours of sleep for good health, okay? So considering, uh, like usually normal people like us, I'm sure most of us probably don't get this much of sleep. So uh, they actually considered uh, that it is still adequate for a person to get at least uh, six hours of sleep, but anything less than that is actually not advisable. Uh. 
um, yeah, because this is actually the time where your body needs to recuperate and heal so that it is a very important uh, to give your body this time to so that these processes can take place. Okay. Okay, the next one is exercise regularly. So this is basically what we're going to be looking more into later on. And a very important thing now is to keep your hands clean and just like wash them whenever you can, right? Uh, yeah, and then, and then the next one is to keep up with your vaccinations, uh, get the right vaccine at the right time and maintain a healthy weight. Don't smoke if you can, okay? And try to minimize your stress. Do things that you like. You know, surround surround yourself with uh, positive people and to get more sunlight. Yeah, that, that's very good. Okay, moving on to exercise. Okay, so I just wanted to throw this question out there uh, to those of you tuned into this session right now. Uh, does anyone here enjoy exercising? If yes, uh, would you like what type of exercise do you normally do? I, I, I mean, I would like to know you guys a bit better as well. If if not right, uh, I just want to know like why, maybe like what are the concerns you may have to not wanting to exercise or you just generally don't don't like it. Okay, so just you can just leave some comments down below. Okay, so of course exercise will definitely help boost your immune system. Uh, if you think about it, right, for most people, the benefit of exercise is very is like kept very simple. They just mainly want to lose weight or to build muscles but actually it is actually more than the it is more than what it actually seems and studies have actually shown that regular exercise can uh, improve one's immune system and overall well-being okay okay so basically uh, physical activity is considered one of the main components of keeping a healthy life and as human beings right we are not actually made to live a sedentary lifestyle or and like have very little movements throughout the day and actually as i was uh, doing my research for this presentation i came across an article suggesting that uh, regular exercise actually can improve the immune system which in turn right in um reduces like uh, the body from getting diseases including viral pathologies for example like covid19 so yeah all you guys out there you may want to start exercising now, <laughs> okay? And another research that I came across, right? Uh, uh, it shows like individuals who have never exercised started an exercise program for over a three month period, and this is where right, they 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 walk for they do walking every day for three months, and they were able to measure their length of recovery for like an upper track upper respiratory tract infection uh, like for example when you get flus and colds and it's shown that they improve 50% faster than the group that did not exercise throughout the whole study so it may be something to think about okay yeah so these studies that I've come across uh, it actually in, is interlinked to my next point when where when we exercise right it increases the production of uh, many types of white blood cells in the body and like we discussed earlier it, this is other specific groups that actually scoop up and then destroys all the bacteria that enter the body okay okay so this is actually very important during uh when your body feels very stressed and, and if you don't have enough exercise it can lead, lead to a weakened immune system let me just give you a brief uh, example of what happens if you put too much stress on the body okay uh, are you aware, are you guys aware of like the fight or flight response it is when you face uh, when you are faced with any difficult or stressful situation then your body goes into the mode where uh, into a mode where your stress hormones are released and either you stay to face the situation or you just run away okay so when this fight or fight mechanism is left on in our bodies for way too long, right? Then um, these uh, chronic hormones will be floating around, and then it actually reduces the amount of immune cells that are circulating in the body. So it is very important to keep this at a low level so that you know we our body is able to fight with anything that uh, we are facing. Okay. Okay. So other ways to 
other ways exercise can benefit our immune system is if we get if is that it improves our quality of sleep, uh, which in turn aids in recovery, increases the bone density, and decreases the odds of us getting conditions like osteoporosis, where your bones get very brittle. And it also elevates the body temperature during uh, exercise. So uh, when it does this, right, when there's a rise in body temperature during and right after exercise, it actually prevents bacteria from growing inside the body. Okay. Okay, I'm sure some of you may be thinking how much exercise sh you should be doing. Uh, okay, so this chart here uh, is by the World Health Organization. And it, it shows the recommended frequency, intensity, and the type of exercises that uh, you should be doing uh, for the different age groups and uh, yeah, if you're pregnant, okay? And many studies, right, in show that this uh, the, the strength of a person's immune response related to exercise de depends on many, many factors. For example, the how often the regularity of uh, exercises that you do, the intensity, duration, and also the type of exercises. Uh, and a few more other studies shown that uh, moderate intensity at physical exercises actually stimulate cellular immunity. Uh, whereas, right, if you do like high intensity types of uh, exercises and you don't rest enough, it actually decreases the cellular immun immunity and this will in turn uh, increase your risk for infectious disease harming the body. So basically what it means, uh, exercise is good for you, but you should not overdo it. And uh, it's also not advisable for us to have like a sudden change in routine if the body is not prepared for it because if the search for of activity for example right, if you are already doing like a moderate intensity type of exercise routine like brisk walking or like cycling you should definitely just try and stick with that and get the routine adjust yourself to the routine uh, and then later on if you slowly want to uh, improve and uh gradually make it harder then you can do so but at a very gradual rate okay uh, okay so for example like whoever does not or uh, does not like exercising or maybe uh maybe now you're thinking about exercising getting the hang of it right you should definitely start with smaller amounts of exercise and then gradually uh, increase it with like the, we increase the frequency, the intensity, and the duration over a, a period of time, okay? Okay, so this diagram I actually picked out from the bigger picture just now, and it focuses more on adults and older adults categories, where at least 150 uh, to 300 minutes of moderate to high intensity or or doing like 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobics exercise are recommended. Of course, this is like, it should be like spread out throughout the week. <laughs> and maybe two out of the seven days should be focused more on muscle strengthening exercises. I will explain a bit more about, uh, about this in the following slides on the types of exercises that we can try and include into these two sections, okay? Okay. So I'll just uh, briefly explain what is aerobic exercise. So it is a type of uh, cardiovascular conditioning. Okay. And by definition, right, aerobic exercise is a type of physical activity uh, that increases the heart rate and breathing rate. And it is also the body's use of oxygen during this type of exercises. Uh, it also keeps your heart, lungs, and circulatory system healthy. And it can include exercises like brisk walking, swimming, running, or cycling. And you guys probably would know it more uh, like it, it is basically cardio exercises. Lah. Okay. But, and then nowadays, right, if you are active on social media, <laughs> I'm not sure if you notice, but jump rope is like a trend now. And everyone seems to be trying this activity out. So I would actually recommend... Uh, those of you who don't really have knee pain to give it a try because if you haven't, right, it can be 
quite fun okay just turn on a good song like any song that you like and then just jump to the beat okay the next one is uh moving on to strength strength strengthening exercises uh, or known as strength training right so these exercises are a bit more focused on the specific type of muscle groups uh, either it can be like the upper body or the trunk or the lower body and it is also known as weight training or resistance training where it helps you become stronger and also build muscle in endurance okay to be able to carry out this uh, sort of strengthening exercises you may need some sort of uh, resistance for example either use your body weight or free weights like for example like dumbbells or barbells resistant bands um or resistant machines or like but uh like you know going to the gym and using their machines there but for now because we are like during F fmco so we would we shall try and look into more exercises at home okay uh helping your body become stronger will definitely reduce the risk of injury and uh, in turn right it helps uh, improve your posture balance and also stability okay moving on okay just this this is just a diagram to show you an example of how you could possibly plan your week and the types of exercises you could uh, be doing as suggested by who so just a recap a minimum of 150 cardio exercises can be broken down into 30 minutes three times a week and maybe two out of the days can can be used to be can be used for like strengthening exercises yeah but please of course don't uh, don't forget to have rest days in between yeah <laughs> because it's also important for your body to have uh, adequate rest and give it time to repair itself after a good workout okay okay next one okay so i have i've come up with a like a personalized workout plan just to give you guys a example of the types of exercises that you can add to your list and uh, i hope this may be a bit like this may be something useful for you to plan out your workouts in the future okay we're going to be concentrating on uh, cardio exercises in in this list here first okay uh, so important thing to remember is to always start with a simple workout before a simple warm-up before your workout and because this is because like, warm-ups can help your body get ready for more strenuous activity and it also lowers the risk of injury and make it easier for you to exercise okay uh, at least try to spend at least five to ten minutes for that and you can either do a slower version of the movements that you'll be doing during your workout doing during the main chunk of your workout for example if you are planning to run or cycle on the bike uh, you can do so as a warm-up uh, but at a slower pace and then or if you are a bit more um, a bit more adventurous and you may want to try different types of warm-up you can try exercises like dynamic stretches such as like lunges walking knee hugs i mean i wish i could show you what it looks like now but <laughs> it's a bit difficult for me to do that <laughs> okay jumping jacks uh arm circles or you can do like leg swings back and forward just something to get the body uh warm okay okay if you refer to the diagram right uh like if you're a beginner and you're not sure haven't started haven't really started exercising much you can do these few exercises which are quite simple uh like for example marching on the spot and then you can progress on to having like high knees marching side shuffling uh two taps on the stairs <laughs> okay if you're not sure of any one of these right uh, i may suggest you to go and look at it online it comes up with a lot of uh, pictures and videos for you to follow okay if you're a bit more adventurous you may want to follow uh, an exercise video on youtube there's so many out there today or if you have the resources available and if you have like a ps4 or a wii box or any nintendo at home right you can actually uh, try and find like exercise games to it's a good starter for anyone who doesn't really like to exercise you can incorporate them into like gaming okay and then looking on the right side where if you're already working out and then if uh, if you want to add 
a lot more interesting exercises into your program you can try the list on the right okay for example like jogging doing some burpees <laughs> okay jump rope like i mentioned earlier doing plank jacks or if you're a bit more committed, you can definitely sign up on a virtual exercise class online. Okay. Or actually having a look at cardio-based high-intensity interval training is uh, it's actually, I mean, like just hearing the name, right, you can probably tell that it's going to be very challenging. And it, it, it actually takes your cardio workout to another level uh, because it pushes you out of your comfort zone. Okay, um, yeah, you can incorporate this high intensity interval training to any type of cardio workout, for example, like running or using the stairs, climbing machine, rowing, jump rope. Uh, and basically, what you need to do is to do um, like 30 minute spurts of uh, the workout, and then when you get another 30 minutes of rest, okay, it's like a one to one ratio. But then you have to repeat that for like four or five sets, okay? Yeah, and the last one is just remember to warm down after all those exercises, okay? I'll just move on to the next one. The next one we're going to be focusing a bit more on strengthening exercises. And I understand exercising during the pandemic can be quite tricky uh, because you may not have the like proper equipment to use at home. Uh, but this list that I came up with hopefully are a bit more uh, friendly for doing at home and you can actually try and incorporate some equipments to make things a little bit more interesting for yourself if you have the resources to do so okay so again the warm-up is very important and if you're a beginner you may want to use more body weight exercises for example like tricep dips push-ups you can try and start with a different uh, position of push-ups if you're not sure you can check online okay donkey kicks uh you can try and start resistance band exercises okay that that one is quite interesting you get so many types of uh weight uh resistant bands out there these days okay uh planking that is very good for your trunk gym ball exercises again you can try and search for some of the exercises on youtube okay if you're a bit more wanting a challenge yeah you can move on to the right side right side of the table okay uh, you may want to consider starting something like pilates where it focus on the much deeper muscle for stability yeah people tend to forget about their smaller muscle groups so this is quite a very very nice exercise to to target this sort of uh, deeper deeper muscles okay and if you want to make it more challenging yes please go ahead and do some weighted squats and lunges if you can't if you don't have weights at home, I would advise you, maybe you could get like those big water bottles. Uh, is it five liters? Yeah, something like that. And then, or maybe like hold on to your rice bag and then just start to do squats and lunges at home. Okay. Uh, modified planking. These are just different types of positions where you can do your planking. Like for example, having your, your legs elevated on a couch or a chair uh, and then plank in that position. Uh, or... Yeah, there are a few more interesting positions that you can try. Uh, I would suggest try looking for them online. Okay. Uh, and if you want to make things interesting, like TRX band is quite popular these days. You can try and get one of those. And there are so many exercises that you can do with them. And again, if you're feeling a bit, uh, and a bit uh, lonely working out alone and you prefer working out in a group, in a class days, yeah, please do sign up for a virtual class online, okay? Okay, coming to the end already, okay? So how do you monitor your performance? So nowadays, right, a lot of people are a bit more aware about digital devices out there to help keep track and monitor their workouts, uh, their movements, and also their health status, right? So if you already have a smartwatch or a fitness band, or even those old school types of pedometer where you hook it to your pants, right? Yeah, don't forget to put it on uh, during your workout. It will actually help you monitor your workouts a bit better, uh, especially when you're first starting out, and then you can use the data next time to compare with your future workouts uh, to see how you're doing and to see if you're progressing or not, okay? 
Okay, besides that, right? You if you get the opportunity to to do a full body assessment, uh, with the in body machine, I would highly recommend it because it gives you a comprehensive overview of your current uh body condition. It covers like areas where where it focuses on uh, like how much body fat you're having, uh, how much muscle you're having, how much visceral fats, especially that's the important one that you want to really focus on because that's the the really really bad fats that actually surround all your important organs like your heart, your kidney, okay, your liver, and we really really want to try and target them out from our body, okay. And it just and it just gives you a whole awareness of your body, and then it gives you a bit more direction on what you need to work on in the future. Okay. Okay. The last one, if you really feel very very lost and very unsure how to get started, how to start with the exercising, you're not sure what sort of exercises may be suitable for you. Uh, for example, you may have had an injury or uh, a surgery, perhaps. Okay. Uh, yeah, please, uh, I would advise you to get in touch with a physiotherapist or maybe a trained person to give you a bit more guidance on how to get started exercising. Okay, this is my last slide, guys. So lastly, I just want to say, just keep it simple, keep moving, and just enjoy the journey for towards better health. Uh, then there's really no better time than now to just start exercising. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Hi Simone, thank you for the sharing. Yeah, this is Elaine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Elaine, thank you. Well, let me show you that audience commented just now. Yeah. Michelle Chin's comment. She did a sleeping room exercise. <laughs> okay, wait, I'm going to stop sharing here. Yeah. Okay, can? <laughs> yes. Can you see the comment? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and who else comment? Yeah. And Xiao Huan commented she did badminton. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what else? Let me see. Yes, it's a good exercise to do. Yeah, and running. What should I recommend? Yes, definitely, especially during this work from home situation. Yeah. What else? Zumba. Miss Chan commented. Zumba. Yes, very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else? Hello. And another one from Shumi. For me, started to exercise is hard, but once I start, I can continue for mm -hmm. more than half an hour. Yeah, just enjoy the process, I would say. It will just get easier each time. Yeah, okay. Simone, for those that lazy to do exercise, right? If they do stretching, how many minutes mm -hmm. per day should I do? Uh? Minimum. Um, minimum. Uh? Yeah. <laughs> So so if, if you plan to work out properly, I would say you, you should try and work out at least like maybe 20 to 30 minutes. If you, even if you want to do like light stretches, like very simple yoga stretches, right? Uh, you, need, you need to be like a bit more consistent instead of like very, very short bursts, which actually in turns do, does nothing lah, because you want to try and either improve your cardio uh cardio system or actually your strength so actually yoga or yoga it actually improves your strength so you may want to do it for a bit more of a, a stretch like like maybe 20 to 30 minutes and if you're just starting maybe start slow first okay okay, okay. Yeah. morning or night mm, that entirely depends on you if you're a morning person or a night person <laughs> Oh, so shall means uh, morning or night or so, no problem. Yeah, no, no. Okay, okay. That's the question from Miss Han. Hold on. Uh. For those with knee injury, what type of exercise can they do other than swimming or yoga? 
Um, this depends on like what type of knee injury and how long already. But if you're really not sure, and if you, uh, I mean, if you have the means to go and seek for some professional advice, maybe just go and have have it checked first, and then maybe get a green light from your therapist to say like what sort of exercises you can do. But yeah, swimming is a good one because it takes away the weight off your knees. Uh, but maybe you can try like brisk walking, maybe for example. Or more of okay. like simple strengthening exercises, focusing on the knee area. Mm. Okay. Next, okay. that's a question from No Captain. Can we do a comprehensive assessment in Colombia Asia Hospital Service by using in body machine? Yes, yes. Uh, our facility actually does have a in body machine, in house in body machine. So. Yeah, anyone who is interested in nearby the area, I wouldn't want you to be crossing state just to come and try our in-body machine. <laughs> yeah, and especially most people are working from home. Yeah, so make sure you have the, make sure you are able to cross and come and find us in Colombia for the in-body machine scanning, okay? Okay. okay. It seems like we don't have any questions. So I think it's from a webinar. Do you have any advice to them uh, before we leave this webinar? Um, yeah, just stay safe, everyone, and I hope we are on the right track to fighting this virus. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Simu, for being with us. Ms. Simu Lo is a physiotherapist with Calibre Asia Hospital Center who has spoken to us about how to boost your immune system through exercise. If you missed the sharing of it, you can always watch this video later on our Heart Transformation by Columbia Asia Hospital Facebook page in turn in Thursday series. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>